Welcome to My Royal Reality with me, Jazz Ellis, where we'll be talking Christian-based motivation and inspiration for all things personal development and spiritual growth. We'll cover topics including Christian development, how to know your purpose, dreaming big, scripture, discipleship, Bible-based encouragement, Christian relationships, and your identity in Jesus. And always remember, as a daughter of God, through Jesus Christ, your reality is that you are royalty. So let's get going. Today's concept is that girls compete with each other, but women empower one another. We kind of talked about this in a prior podcast or video, but we're going to kind of unpack this some more in a little bit different angle. So are you doing what you're doing because God told you to do it or because you're trying to keep up with the girl next to you? So we're talking about competition. We're talking about being intentional and empowerment today. And I wanted to ask you that question because you do a lot of things in your life. You're a very busy girl. <laughs> and why are you doing all the things that you're doing? Are you doing them to please other people? Or are you doing things to compete with other people? Or are you doing those things because God has told you to do those things? If you think you are in competition with the girl next to you, you will never cheer her on. And that's so sad and that's heartbreaking. If you think that she has to fall in order for you to rise, that's an issue. I think of James 3.16 that says, For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. So if you've got that selfish ambition that you want to start the thing that she started because you want to be able to be that same caliber or just as relevant as she is, it's like, man, if we birth that project or dream out of jealousy or trying to compete with her, that is an awful foundation to build that project on, you know? Because that scripture that I just read promised you that if you have envy, you will also have disorder and every evil practice. It's like an open door for the enemy to start operating in your life or in your career or in whatever it is you started. I love 1 Thessalonians 5.11. It says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. We rise by lifting others. And I have that little saying back there as well, if you're watching this by video. It says, we rise by lifting others. And I love that. Like the person next to you doesn't need to fall or fail in order for you to thrive and succeed and rise up. We rise by lifting other people. I think of a candle. A lit candle does not go out just because it lights another candle. Clearly you know that, but think about the profound wisdom behind that. If you view yourself as a candle, a lit candle doesn't go out just because it lights another candle. Your light, friend, is not going to go out just because you build her up. Your light is not going to go out just because you encourage her to follow her dream. You are filled with the Spirit of God and the light of Jesus burns brightly in you if you are a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. Matthew 5.16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Friend, you are filled with the light of God. You are that candle. As it says in scripture, we aren't called to, you know, cover our light. We're called to go up on a hill and boldly let everybody see the light of Jesus that's in us. And so you've got the light of Jesus in you. Now, light other people up. You've got that flame coming from you as a candle that's lit by Jesus. Now, light other people's wicks. Like, let them start burning with the love and the light of Jesus as well. First Thessalonians 5, 14 through 15 says, And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. 
Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Luke 6.31 says, Do to others as you would have them do to you. Absolutely. Ministry is teamwork. We are all doing our part. And you might be like, well, I'm not like a pastor. I'm not, you know, making podcasts or YouTube videos like you. But Jesus has called you to the Great Commission. He has called you to go to the ends of the earth and make disciples and baptize people in his name. And so when you think about it, we are all on the same team. We're all doing our part. This is teamwork. You and I are on the same team. If you have accepted Jesus, we're on the same team, friend. And so when you realize that all of us as Christians collectively are on the same team, you will start cheerleading on your sisters in Christ. If you see that girl who's doing what you want to be doing, whether it's starting a podcast or writing a book or starting a nonprofit or whatever she's doing that you're like, I want to do that. Like, I feel like God has called me to do that. Then cheer her on and do yours as well. Just because there's already a book written doesn't mean that you can't write your book. Just because she's making videos doesn't mean that you can't make videos. Like we're all called to do our part. We're all on the same team. And we are needing to realize that all of this, videos, the podcasts, the books, whatever, all of this isn't for self-promotion, but for Jesus promotion. So we're all on the same team. We're all trying to accomplish the same task. As you are looking at other people and what they're doing, are you being a girl and competing with them? Or are you being a woman and you're empowering them? So Galatians 6, 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So I encourage you, promote that lady's book. Promote her business. Tell her she looks beautiful. Tell her she's inspiring. Like her post. <laughs> like I'm talking about, you know that girl that just popped up in your mind that you're jealous of her, that you wish you had the life she had, that you wish you had the ministry she had or the career she had or whatever, stop competing with her and start empowering her because you're sowing and you will reap that. And so that's what I like to do. It's like if I want to write a book someday, I'm going to start promoting the books that my friends write. And then I will believe that what I sow, I'll also reap. And when I have a book come out someday, then I will have a whole army of friends, you know, that will be willing to promote me because I promoted them. Tell a friend that she looks beautiful. Tell her that she's inspiring. All of these things, it doesn't diminish your light. It doesn't take away from your light. It's such a beautiful thing to be able to encourage other people. And you don't have to be the best at everything. Not everything is a competition for crying out loud. <laughs> uh, Romans 12, 6 says, In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So there are ladies I know who are world-class chefs and amazing moms and gardeners and they love to sew and they love to clean. Those are not things that describe me. <laughs> I do the basics, you know, I selflessly try to serve my husband in all of the domestic ways that I know I'm called to do, but I am not equipped in them to love all those things. Let me say it that way. <laughs> so if I start competing with ladies who thrive in all these areas, I start to get really disheartened and discouraged and I have to remind myself, I may not be wonderful at all of those things, but get me in front of a camera to be able to encourage women of God or get me in front of my computer. I can write a message. I can write. Um, get me in front of a camera or behind it, whatever. I can film. I can edit videos and reach the world for Jesus. Like I thrive in those arenas, but I don't thrive in all the other areas that other ladies maybe thrive in. And so I am really intentional and in trying my best to learn to compliment and encourage those ladies who do all those other things well that I wish I could do, 
but I'm not as talented as them in that area, or I'm not as graced as them in that area as Romans 12, 6 talked about. And then I hope that they can encourage me in my giftings as well. And so I'm just going to get a little bit vulnerable here with a little bit of a struggle that I've had is my mother-in-law is so amazing. Like if you met her, you would be like, wow, you are like perfect. You're like Proverbs 31 woman walking in the flesh. (laughs) And she is one of those people that can do everything and she's good at it. Like she's an amazing chef. She is an amazing baker. She knows how to sew and like can make everything. She loves flowers and gardening. She's a great mom, a great grandma. Like She does all of those things well and she enjoys them. And when I got married, like I was faced with the reality that like I didn't grow up learning and knowing how to cook. Like I'm not gifted in that area. I knew almost next to nothing. And so when I got married, I was struggling just trying to figure out how to do basic things. And I noticed that when I'd visit her and when she'd come visit me, I'd have like a panic not because I didn't want to spend time with her. I absolutely love spending time with her. It's just almost like I felt uh, discouraged, like less than being in her presence because of all the areas that I want to be good at, but like I'm not. And I have other areas that I want to focus on. Like I love doing videos like this and pouring into ladies and writing messages, editing videos, all of that takes so much time, you have no idea. (laughs) And so that's where it's like, I wanna get good at these other things, but I realized that that would detract from me being able to do this and this, making videos and podcasts, this is what God has told me to do. So I do the basics and my husband is amazing and wired completely for me where he really does not care about food. Like it's fine. Like we both just don't care. We just eat to survive. We don't eat to like live and relish in every bite. But I say all of this because, you know, James's mom will always be a huge part of his life and I want her to be like, she's his mom. And obviously I'm a huge part of my husband's life because I'm his wife now. But we have different roles and so we don't have to compete with each other like I'm his wife and she's his mom and we're both important to James but we don't have to compete for each other's spot you know like we can be ourselves and I don't have to try to measure myself up to Mrs. Ellis because she's like an angel on earth you know (laughs) but um That's what I really was struggling with because I think subconsciously I was like competing with her because I wanted to live up to her her expectations and I wanted to live up to any of expectations that James maybe had subconsciously. And I had to realize that I'm not competing with her. Like I'm not, she's running her own race. I'm running my own. And I want to encourage her to thrive in all of those areas because she is gifted in them and she thrives in them. And she genuinely loves those things. And I don't have to be a copycat of her. And that's really liberating and that's freeing. And I can be an original how God made me and do the things that he's called me to do that maybe he hasn't called her to do. And so like I thought of a friend of mine that she has a ministry that I have followed since I was 16. And I wanted to have a ministry just like hers. And I actually wrote a letter to her a couple years ago just thanking her for everything that she has done in her ministry because she inspired me. And whether she knew it or not, like she genuinely touched my heart and my life through the content that she put out. And so I'm not competing with her. Like I wanted to encourage her and empower her to keep going and keep reaching young women. She has a certain sphere of people that I will never be able to reach. Just like I have a certain sphere of people that she will never be able to reach. We're all doing our part. And so I want to empower her. I'm not competing with her. I want to empower her to keep thriving in what God has called her to do. You are not in silent competition with everyone. You're really not. You're running the race that God has called you to run. And you really don't have any idea what one word of encouragement can do for someone. I'm sure you can think of a moment right now that somebody has spoken 
a word of encouragement to you and it has revolutionized your life and like given you a second wind. And that's because Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Use your words to speak life to others, guys. Use your words to speak life into other people's lives. It can really give them that second wind. That's how powerful your words are. So girls compete with each other and women empower one another. So are you going to compete or are you going to empower? Be a girl's girl. Empower one another, friends. That is my encouragement for you today. In closing, I hope you enjoyed today's topic and please do me a huge favor and give this podcast a five-star rating or give this video a like. And please also comment, follow, share, subscribe, leave a review, you know, all the things social media related. And I really appreciate your support and I'm looking forward to the next time that we get to spend time together. And always remember, friend, that as a daughter of God, through Jesus Christ, your reality is that you are royalty.